Hey guys, today we will see how a mediator design pattern can reduce communication complexity between multiple objects when they are dependent on each other. Mediator pattern, as you may already know, comes under behavioral design pattern category. In this course, we will see what is mediator design pattern, when to use it, and what benefit we get using it. Normally in an enterprise MVVM application, you will find that mediator pattern is implemented for view model communications. The reason behind this is that if hundreds of developers are working on an application and if they use their own way of communicating across view models, then it would be a nightmare to manage the references. In an enterprise application, we may have thousands of view model, right? You can imagine how complex the communication would be. Therefore, in such cases, it is really a good architecture decision if we segregate the communication responsibility to someone else and impose a single communication mechanism across view models. That way, code maintenance becomes easy as well as definitely it will reduce system bugs because generally most of the bugs are injected during the interactions between objects. We will understand this by working on a simple console application as well as we will see how this pattern can be implemented in a generic way in a real-time WPF MVVM application. But before that, make sure to subscribe the channel for all the future videos on c -sharp and other .NET technologies. With this, let's get started. So, this is Mediator Pattern UML. The naming conventions are as per Gang of Four Design Pattern book. I would like to change it a bit. Let's make the colleague as I subscriber and concrete colleague one and two as subscriber one and subscriber two. Don't worry, we will discuss about each component in a bit and I will ensure that by end of this video, you will be able to implement it in your real time projects. Let's see the definition once. The definition says, defines an object that encapsulates how a set of objects interact, promotes loose coupling by keeping the objects from referring to each other directly. In short, mediator pattern encapsulates how objects communicate with each other without referring to each other directly. Let's break this down and understand. Say you have two classes that wants to communicate with each other. Okay, that's easy. We can either instantiate the object and communicate or maybe we can use an eventing mechanism. There could be other ways as well. But say you have many such classes and they all wants to communicate with each other. In that case, I hope you realize how complex the reference maintenance would be. Perhaps each subscriber should maintain the reference of all other subscribers. That gives a very ugly, complex and difficult to maintain dependency graph. So, in this kind of situation, the mediator pattern is best suited. Mediator pattern allows object to avoid communicating directly. Instead, enables the communication via central mediator object. We will talk about some more specific points when we should implement this pattern. But for now, let's see in detail all the components of this pattern and how this is implemented. Let's say you have two classes, class A and class B, that wants to interact with each other. But as mentioned, if we are using mediator pattern, then they will not interact like this. Instead, they will interact via mediator. Class A will call a method in mediator, something like method publish, and in turn, Mediator will notify all the classes who are interested to receive the message from class A. Mediator will do this by again calling a method in class B. I have named it here as method handle. Now, to call a method of class B, that's method handle, the mediator must have the instance of B, right? That's where each subscriber, I mean the classes who wants to receive the messages from publishing class, must ensure that their references are available in mediator. That's where we should have one more method in mediator. 
I call it as subscribe. This method is used by all the interested classes to add themselves to the mediator. You can see this here. That's the instance of subscriber sending it to mediator. It's a kind of bidirectional reference setting. Mediator has the instance of all the subscribers and subscriber has the instance of mediator. Now, if there are one or two subscribers, then it is easy for mediator to keep those instances, right? But as we know, there could be many subscribers, could be thousands. So, mediator has to maintain all the subscribers in a list. That's fine. But now the question is, what should be the type of the list? I mean, what data type? That's where the pattern introduced one more interface for subscribers. I call it as iSubscriber. The interface must be implemented by all the subscriber classes. And now, Mediator can safely maintain a list of iSubscriber, which will be nothing but list of all the subscribers. Now, if we rearrange the diagram, then we get the UML that we have seen in the beginning. I hope you have some idea now how Mediator pattern works. Before we go through when exactly we should use this pattern, let's implement this in a console application. So, let me create a console application. Let's create a folder called subscriber. Here I will create all the classes that wants to send and receive messages. I mean the classes that wants to interact with each other. Let me create those classes first. So, I have three classes here, subscriber 1, 2 and 3. I'll not write any business logic here. Let's assume that it does lot of things for now. Maybe read write to database or something else. And now it wants to send some messages to each other. But remember, it does not want to interact directly. Instead, via a mediator. So, let's create another folder mediator. I will keep all the mediator related classes and interfaces here. Let's first create our mediator interface iMediator. What it will have? As discussed, a publish method. This method will be called by the object that wants to send message. In our case, maybe some of the subscriber who wants to publish message. Please do note that implementations of mediator pattern may have some variations. This is a very simple implementation just to understand the pattern for now. Right now, it can just handle a single string message. But in real time application, you have to handle different types of messages and also have to ensure that it is received by only the interested subscriber. And to handle different types of messages, the implementation would be a bit complex. I will show you that when we will implement this pattern in WPF MVVM application. For now, let's complete this interface implementation. So, we should have one more method here, right? Subscribe. This method will be called by all the subscribers to add themselves to the mediator. iSubscribers are the object who are interested in receiving messages. Let's create iSubscriber interface. It has a single method handle. This will be invoked by our mediator. Now let's create our concrete mediator. Let's implement iMediator. So, this subscribe method will receive all the subscribers whenever subscriber subscribes themselves. And to maintain all the subscribers here, what do we need? Yes, we need a collection. Let's create a list. Now let's add the incoming subscriber to the list. Okay, what publish method should do? Yes, it should loop through all the subscribers in the list. 
and call handle method. Now this handle method will be there in all the concrete subscribers. Let's implement our iSubscriber interface to our subscribers. So we have the method handle here. For now, let's just print a simple message. Message received by subscriber1. Let's do the similar kind of implementation to other subscribers. So, our subscriber implementation is done. Or is it really done? Are we missing something here? Yes, definitely missing, right? Remember, we have to add our subscriber to the mediator. And for that, we have to call a method in mediator. And hence, we need mediator instance here. So, let's inject it via constructor. And call subscribe with this instance. So, with this statement, mediator adds this class instance to its list. Okay, now let's do the similar implementation again with other subscribers as well. So, here we are subscribing this as well for the messages. But if you see subscriber 3, we are not subscribing here. What it means? It means this class is not interested to receive messages. Or we can say that when someone publishes a message, this class will not get any notification. Let's say this class wants to publish the message. So let's create a public method here. Let's publish a message. How do we do that? Yes, using mediator instance. I hope you are able to relate to what we have discussed earlier. This class basically publishes some messages which are received by subscriber 1 and 2. But for this interaction, the publisher class do not directly call the receiving classes. Instead, it is sending message to mediator and mediator will in turn send it to all the subscribers. The only prominent flow in this implementation is that Right now, Mediator will send the messages to all the subscribers in its list. I mean, with the current implementation, we cannot send the message to only selected subscribers. But as mentioned, I will show you that in just a bit. Okay, now let's wire this all up from our program.cs class. Let's instantiate our Mediator. Let's instantiate our subscribers as well and pass mediator instance to it. So our subscriber instantiation is done. Now let's publish a message from subscriber 3 class. Let's put a breakpoint and debug this. So it instantiates mediator and then subscriber1. Subscriber1 receives the mediator instance and subscribes itself. So it goes to concrete mediator class and adds the subscriber to its list. See the subscriber is subscriber1. It comes out again does the same thing for subscriber 2 as well. And for subscriber 3, just stores the mediator instance to a class level variable. That's because we want to use this down here. Now it calls the publish method. Goes to mediator, loops through the subscriber list, goes to respective subscriber handle method and we get the expected result. Subscriber 1 and 2 receives the message but not subscriber 3. Now say subscriber 3 is also interested in its own message. 
So what we are required to do? Just subscribe for the message. Let's do that. Let's run it and see. Now see, subscriber 3 also receives the message. Now say, subscriber 2 is not interested. So what should we do? Just remove the subscription. Note that ideally we should have a method in Mediator to remove the subscriptions. Let's run it. See, subscriber 2 does not receive the message now. Okay, with this, we are done with our simple console implementation of Mediator pattern. I hope it was simple. You have to implement this Mediator class once and you can use this in your entire application for sending and receiving notifications with the required message. But as mentioned earlier, there are a few prominent improvement areas in this code. As you have seen, this implementation just loops through the subscriber list and sends only one type of message. In our case, that's a string. But how about sending different types of domain messages like product, product order, or customer information? I mean messages based on business requirement. That's not possible. This code is not generic enough to handle that. I have created a second part of this video where I have used a WPF MVVM application to demonstrate how exactly this pattern is implemented in a real-time application. Don't miss to check out that. Let me end this part here. If the content was helpful, don't forget to subscribe the channel and drop in comment for all the future videos on C-Sharp and other technologies. Thanks.